Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Sanjay Dudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present all the four solutions of the weekly contest 296. So in case you are interested in looking out for a specific question, then you can please refer the chapter section below and move on to that portion of the video. Even before jumping on to the solutions, I have an important announcement to make. One of the early subscribers of Coding Decoded, Anil Shalma, grabbed 9 offers that took from all top notches Google, Splunk, Amazon Intuit, Tower Research, Uber 2, Sigma, Coinbase and he rejected Google at L6 level. Google at L6 is a level that is considered the retirement level at Google. So in case you are interested in knowing about his journey, how he prepared for it, how he was able to crack all these nine offers, then this video is for you. I'm attaching its link in the description below. So do check this out. Apart from this, I've also created coding decoded SD division sheet topic wise. So if you're interested in looking out for specific topic questions, for example, dynamic programming, graph, try binary search, pack tracking, bit manipulation, stacks, monotonic stacks, sliding window heaps, matrix sets, then this sheet is for you. Here you will find the template that will form the basis of that concept. And along with that, you will see more practice questions divided in various categories, easy, medium and hard. And for each question that is mentioned over here, a video solution is already present in the sheet itself. So whenever you get stuck, please refer to that video solution. And all those questions are that are marked with double asterisk sign are must do before an interview. I, I hope these sheets help you up, get confidence whenever you, whenever you have an interview planned very soon. So do check them out. And in case you want to ask anything from me general with respect to these sheets or anything with respect to internships or placements, then please feel free to message me on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded. Both the links are stated below. So when you open these backtracking sheet, bit manipulation, binary search, try sheet, you will find that there is a template that is specified that forms the basis of all the questions of backtracking. So guys, uh, learn this template by, these templates by heart and uh, you will get enough confidence to crack any question of backtracking tries graphs in any interview that you have in the future. Now let's get back to the question. The first one that I'll be solving is partition array such that maximum difference is k. I'm going in the priority that I feel was the most difficult to the least difficult and I feel this this has a slight trick to it therefore I'm taking this first. So here in this question we are given an array of integers and an integer value k. What we need to do we need to identify the minimum number of subsequence that are needed such that the difference between the maximum element and the minimum, minimum element in each subsequence is at most k. So this is the problem that we have here. They have provided us with few examples. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly hop onto it. Lead code weekly contest 296. The first one is partition array such that the maximum difference is K. So let's try and understand the question. The question says that we need to return the minimum number of subsequences. So underline the word subsequences needed such that the difference between the maximum element and the minimum element in each subsequence is at most k. So the takeaway here is we need to identify the maximum element and the minimum element of each subsequence that we are forming and the difference between these two elements the range of the entire subsequence should be less than or equal to k. Now let's take few examples and try to understand what the question is actually asking us to do. So let's take the same example that was specified in the question. We have the array elements as 3, 6, 1, 2, 5 and the range of each subsequence should be within two units. So let's try and check what will be the result for this here. What we will do, we will keep 1, 3 and 2 as part of one subsequence. So 3, 1 and 2 will be part of a single subsequence and 6 and 5 will be part of another subsequence. So we have divided this entire array into two parts. One subsequence has three elements, three, one and two, and the other subsequence has two elements, six and five. Why can't, can't be six part of this? Because the minimum element here is one. The maximum element here is three. If we bring in six over here, then the maximum element would become six and six minus one gives you five, which is out of range of K because as per the question, 
all the elements within a particular sub sequence should be less than or equal to k this violates the condition as a result of it six can't be part of the sub sequence similarly five as well can't be part of the sub sequence if you bring in five then the maximum element would be updated to five five minus one gives you four four is greater than two as a result of it the condition is breached now comes the question how are we gonna solve this up so let's for a second forget that there is any constraint that we have to maintain the sub sequence or the order in which the elements are present let's forget it for a second i'll tell you why and how is it working but let's assume it this, this constraint doesn't exist now let's start the iteration the first element that we see happens to be one so if we consider one as a minimum element in this entire input array up till what range can the elements be added as part of this sub sequence that is starting from one so if we add one plus two you will get three so up till the range of three all the elements can be added into this sub sequence because uh, as soon as we go beyond three then it will violate the condition of k less than equal to k so let's start the iteration and we added one onto the sub sequence and we know that till the time we don't reach three we are good to add more elements onto it so let's add two so two also gets added let's add three three also gets added next we see is five so when we check whether five can be added or into this sub sequence or not five can't be added because one plus two gives you three and three happens to be less than in value in comparison to five as a result of which we will have to consider another sub sequence so with five acting as the least element will create another sub sequence and the range for this particular sub sequence will be five plus two which is seven so up till seven all the elements can be added as part of this sub sequence so let's continue the process next we see is six so six gets added six is less than seven and we are done with the iteration of entire array finally what do we see we see that we have created two sub sequence one two and three the other one is five and six so what do we do we simply start the iteration on the least element we identify the range up till which the elements can be added onto that sub sequence and here the range was three so up till three all the elements got added and as soon as we saw five we created a new sub sequence we calculated the range for five it came as seven and we added all the elements up till seven so this is a pretty straightforward simple algorithm to understand but you will ask me guys why have we not considered the subsequence constraint that was specified in the question why are we changing the order of elements present in the input array because as per the question it says subsequence when we see subsequence the order can't be changed but here we are changing the order why is it working so let's consider an example that there are plenty of elements in the input array and we have the first one is five then we have few more elements and we have two then we have few more elements and then we have four so as per the algorithm what we are going to do we're going to sort this array up and the first one will have two then we'll have four and then we'll have five let's forget whatever elements are there they are greater than uh, five so let's not consider them there are few more elements that but let's forget them up for a second and let's start the iteration let's apply the same algorithm and see what results come up so we the first element that we see is two so from two we'll add it in a, a one sub sequence and what be the range for two the value of k happens to be two here so 2 plus 2 gives you 4 so for this sub sequence the range turns out to be 4 so we'll keep on adding all the elements up till 4 in our input array so we see 4 4 gets added and next we see is 5 as soon as we see 5 it breaches the range for this particular sub sequence as a result of which a new sub sequence needs to be created with the least element as 5 and the range for this sub sequence turns out to be 7 let's focus all our attention on 2 2 and with respect to 2 4 lies towards the right of 2 and after performing the sorting operation 4 still lies towards the right of 2 as a result of which the relative order is maintained so we are not much concerned about elements that exist towards the right of 2 what we are interested more in those elements that exist towards the left of 2 because we are corrupting the relative ordering of 5 with respect to 2 here 5 lies towards the left of 2 here 5 lies towards the right of 2 but why are we considering this case over here the reason is that 
टू एंड फाइव कैन नेवर बी पार्ट ऑफ द सेम सब सिक्वेंस एज पर दैल्यू के एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ इच द रिलेटिव ऑर्डरिंग रियली डजन मैटर लेट्स कंसिडर वन मोर एग्जाम्पल हेयर द एलिमेंट्स आज फोर टू एंड थ्री सो वॉट वी विल डू विल शॉर्ट दिस विल हैव टू थ्री एंड फोर एंड लेट्स परफॉर्म द सेम ऑपरेशन अगेन द वैल्यू ऑफ के हैपन्स टू बी टू अगेन एंड द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट दैट वी सी इज टू वी गो एंड क्रिएट अ न्यू सब सिक्वेंस द लीस्ट वैल्यू इन दैट सब सिक्वेंस इज टू and the range for the subsequence will be up till 4 2 plus 2 is 4 so all the elements up till 4 will be added as part of the subsequence so we have 3 3 gets added then we have 4 4 gets added now if we carefully analyze we have corrupted the order relative ordering how the elements will actually be present in the subsequence as per the question the elements will be present in this particular order 4 2 and 3 but we are only interested in identifying the least possible value and the maximum value that are part of the subsequence which we have generated by virtue of sorting operation had the question been return the subsequence then this algorithm would never have worked because we have corrupted the or relative order but in the question it was specified to return the number of subsequence needed therefore this algorithm works otherwise it would have failed Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the coding section and conclude this approach. And I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just told here. Here I've written few corner cases. If my num dot length is less than equal to one, I return the length. Otherwise, I go ahead and sort this entire array. I've created an answer variable and initialized to one because in the worst case, the uh, there would be at least one sub sequence because the length of the input array is greater than one. and then i go ahead and create a variable that represents the minimum element that is present in my entire input array i start the iteration on the first index goes up till the length in case my current element minus the minimum one happens to be greater than k that means the current element is out of range of k as a result of which we should reset our minimum element because we are creating a new sub sequence here since we are creating a new sub sequence here uh, the uh, the number of sub sequence count also gets incremented otherwise If this condition is not met, nums at the ith index minus minimum is less than equal to k. That means that particular element is within the range of k. Once we are done with the iteration, we simply return the ans variable. So let's try this up. Accepted. The time complexity of this approach is order of n log n because we are sorting the input array. The space complexity is constant space. We are not using anything extra to compute the answer. with this i hope you enjoyed this question and let's continue to the next question of the contest which is design a text editor i'm shooting for the last question because i consider it to be the second most difficult one design a text editor it's a design level question where we need to actually design a text editor and for keeping track of a text editor there are two things that are required the string that has been added on to the editor and the relative position of the pointer that we have that will track the number of elements added and their indexes so here in this question we need to implement the text editor class and uh, we need to provide the constructor of the class we need to support four methods add text delete text cursor left and cursor right so i'll be walking you through this helper methods implementation and understanding why the presentation so let's quickly hop on to it so the first method that we have is add text it appends text to the cursor and the cursor after the addition gets updated to the right of the text so right now the pointer points to the zeroth index the string is empty that means the cur the cursor is something like this and the call comes where we need to append lead code on to the input string so lead code gets added so the first is the addition of lead code and the second thing that we are going to do is to update our pointer to the right of lead code as a result of which the updated index would be equal to p plus the length of the string text dot length so remember these two formulas here in the add text method we are appending lead code into our uh, editor string and we are updating the pointer p plus the input text dot length let's proceed ahead then the state of our editor string is something like this lead code followed by the pointer and pointer points to the eighth index now assume that the request comes up for text deletion and the parameter k gets passed as 2 so as per the understanding it deletes k characters to the left of the cursor and it returns the number of characters that actually got deleted 
so here the intention is to delete two characters to the left of the cursor or the pointer which is right now at this particular position so what all are intended to be deleted d and e are intended to be deleted how do we solve this up we have to go back to two previous characters so let's create two variables left and right so the left would be updated to pointer minus k what is the value of pointer right now it is 8 8 minus 2 is 6 so let's gets update left gets updated to 6 and right remains as the same as 8 so we are looking out for those characters or the range where the deletion has to be executed so we have to delete all the characters starting from the 6 index up till 8 so what is the 6 index the 6 6 index is d so starting from d we will de uh, we'll delete all the characters up till the 8th index so these two are gone there is a small corner case that you should think of while coding this up let's hypothetically assume instead of 2 getting passed or delete text method we had 16 so in dt 16 was passed however if you carefully see that the input string only had 8 characters that was lead code so how can you delete 16 characters from it so let's apply the same formula where we are trying to identify the left bound of the characters that are to be deleted so left bound will come as 8 minus 16 that would be updated to minus 8 and since you can see that it goes negative we should update it to the minimum value of 0 so this should be actually 0 instead of minus 8 so as soon as the value goes in negative index we should automatically update it to 0 so this is one corner case that you should think of while coding it up for the rest of the algorithm remains the same let's proceed ahead this time we are interested in writing cursor left method so let's try and understand its definition move the cursor to the left k times by k characters return the last minimum of 10 comma length characters to the left of the cursor where length is the number of characters to the left of the cursor so uh, there are two things that we are actually doing in this operation so let's go step by step let's hypothetically assume we have cursor left and to cursor left two was passed so what we will do we have to go uh, move the cursor to the left by k characters so right now we are pointing at this particular position p happens to be six and we are interested in moving the cursor to the left by two units so it goes up till this particular position p minus uh, 2 6 minus 2 gives you 4 so it points to C right now this one and first of all we are gonna do do this and once we are updated the pointer position what we need to do we need to return the last 10 characters to the left of the cursor what would be the last 10 characters uh, the last 10 characters would be lead because uh, there are only four characters that are present towards the left of the pointer as a result of which we'll be returning only lead as the answer so there are two things that we have done the first thing is to move the pointer by k units towards the left and once you have done that you go back 10 steps back or up till the length of your editor string and you return at max uh, the 10 characters this is the last helper method that we need to write cursor right it moves the cursor by k characters towards the right this is the first part and then the second part return the last minimum of 10 comma length characters towards the left of the cursor so let's apply it let's assume cursor right was invoked and 2 was passed as an argument and uh, right now the pointer is pointing to 6 6 plus 2 gives you 8 so pointer gets updated to this particular position at 8 and what do we need to do we need to return the last 10 characters or the length of characters towards the left so how many characters are present in our editor string there are in total six characters as a result of it instead of uh, 10 we will be returning only six characters so lead code lead co will be returned as part of this invocation and this is all that we need to do this is exactly this the second part is exactly the same as the cursor left method and we will be creating a singular method for solving both these cases and the moving the cursor is pretty simple and straightforward so let's quickly hop on to the coding session and conclude it up so here I've taken two private variables. The first one that will keep track of the editor string and the second one is the current pointer. In the constructor part, I initialize it to new string builder and current pointer gets updated to zero. Let's go step by step and uh, write uh, each method. And the first one is add text. Here, what do we do? We simply go ahead and append the uh, text onto the current character position and the current pointer gets updated to 
current pointer plus the length of text that I was getting added onto the edited text. So this is exactly the same that I showed in the presentation as well. Uh, let's talk about the next helper method which is delete text. So what do we do? We identify the ranges where deletion is to be done. So length left would be equal to math.max 0 comma current minus k since deletion is to be done of k characters towards the left and right gets updated to the current pointer. We delete all the characters starting from the left index up till right. The current gets updated to left and we delete the number of characters that we have actually deleted. Pretty simple and straightforward. Let's quickly proceed ahead. The next helper method is cursor left and we need to move the cursor towards left left by k characters. So what do we do? We update the current pointer to math.max 0 comma current minus k. So why have we taken math.max? Because in order to avoid underflow conditions. And once we have done that, what do we need to do? We need to return 10 characters towards the left of the current pointer. I have created a helper method for it. I'll be walking you through it later in the section. Let's proceed ahead. The next helper method that we need to write is current uh, cursor right and we need to move the cursor towards the right direction by k units. So we update the cursor to math.min the input the editor string length comma current character current pointer plus k. So we are taking the minimum of these two in order to avoid overflow conditions. And once we have done that we simply return the 10 characters towards the left of the po updated pointer. So let's walk through this helper method. So here we go 10 spaces back and uh, once we go 10 spaces back to that point starting from that particular index up till the current pointer we return the substring. This math.max 0 comma current minus 10 it is written in order to avoid underflow conditions again. So let's try this up. Accept it. Now let's shoot for the next problem which is replace elements in an array. Here in this question we are given an input array and we are also told few set of operations. By operations what we can do we can replace 1 by 3, we can replace 4 by 7 and we can replace 6 by 1. What do we need to do? We need to apply all these operations onto this input array and once we are done with this we need to return the finally updated output array. So what is the final whatever is the final state of our input array after applying the operations we need to return that. So I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it. Why the presentation? So let's quickly hop onto it. So let's take the same example that was specified in the question. We have the input element as 1, 2, 4 and 6 and as per the operation array 1 is getting replaced by 3, 4 is getting replaced by 7 and 6 is getting replaced by 1. So let's apply these operations onto this input array. So uh, 1 is getting replaced by 3 so we get 3 here, here, 4 is getting replaced by 7 we get 7 over here and 6 is getting replaced by 1 we get 1 over here. The output array is 3, 2, 7, 1. So this is the expectation of this example. How can we go about solving this question? Let's try and create a map for it in the first go. So what we will store, we will store at what all indexes these elements are present. So one is present at 0th index. So one is present at 0th index. So this represents the value and this represents the index. Then we have two at the first index. So two occurs at the first index. 4 occurs at the second index, 6 occurs at the third index. And now let's start the iteration. We will iterate over the operations array. So what do we see in the first go? We see that the first element is 1 comma 3. So we check what at what index does 1 occur. 1 occurs at the 0th index. So what do we do? We simply go to that index and replace the current value with the updated value. What is the updated value? The updated value is 3. What was the current value? It was 1. So we go to the 0th index, we go over here and replace 1 with 3. So this is gone, we have 3 over here. Along with this, what we should do? We should be updating the map as well. So now we have the third element, the third value at the 0th index. So this element should be deleted and we should have 3 value at the 0th index. So the updated state of our map is something like this. So you need to delete the previous entry and update it with the new entry that got added at that particular index. Let's continue the iteration and the next element that we have is 4 comma 7. So where does 4 occur in our input array? Let's check it from the map. So it occurs at the second index. So we go to the second index and we perform the replacement operation. So let's go to the second index and let's replace it up. So with what value will we, will we replace? We will replace it with 7. So 7 gets here 
and what we should do we should simply delete this from the map and add a new entry that tells that 7 exists at the second index pretty straightforward let's proceed ahead next we see is 6 comma 1 so let's check at what all what index does it 6 occur 6 occurs at the third index so let's go to the third index and let's go here and we perform the replacement operation so this is gone and the updated value is 1 so as a result of which we delete it from the map as well and we have 1 at the third index so the map gets updated to 1 comma 3 now finally what is the final state of our input array it is 3 2 7 and 1 which is in sync with our expectation and map appropriately reflects this value we have th 3 value at the 0th index 2 at the 1st index 7 at the 2nd index and 1 at the 3rd index absolutely correct so let's quickly walk through the coding section and include it up in the first go as i told in the presentation i go ahead and create my map it is of type integer comma integer and here the key of the map is actually the value and the value of the map is the index at which that val occurs in my input array so i iterate over my nums array and i appropriately built my map this is my value nums dot i and it occurs at the ith index once i have done that what do i do i iterate over the operations array I extract three values from the operations array. Uh, one is the old value that is there at op dot zeroth index, new value op dot one index, and the index at which this value is present in my uh, input array. I get it from the map. Once I have done that, what do I do? I replace my nums at the index to the new value. I update my map with new value comma index, and I simply remove from the map. Uh, the entry corresponding to the old value once i'm done with this what do i do i simply return my nums array accepted uh, pretty simple and straightforward it wasn't that difficult at all the time complexity of this approach is order of uh, n where n signifies the number of operations array that we have plus the number of uh, elements that we have so let's just write nums dot length and operations dot length and the space complexity is equal to uh, the the size of the map which is equal to uh, the number of elements that we have in our nums array let's shoot for solving the easiest question of the context the first one which is min max game and here in this question we are given an input array and its length is of power of 2 we need to perform and replace the original array by a new array and we need to continue doing it till the time the size of the new array doesn't get updated to 1. And with each iteration for even index of i, what do we do? The new element at the ith index is equal to minimum of uh, the element at 2i index comma the element at 2i plus 1 index in the original array. The minimum of these two for every odd index it is equal to the new element at the ith index is equal to maximum of element at 2i index comma 2i plus 1 index so whenever we see an odd index we go for the maximum one whenever we see an even index we go for the minimum one so here they have provided us with an example i'll be walking you through this example why the presentation so let's quickly hop on to it so this is the input array that is given to us and right now the value of i is 0 here the value of i is 1 here the value of i is 2 here the value of i is 3 so what do we do we are creating the new array and since the value of i is 0 right now uh, we will shoot for the minimum 1 out of uh, 2i and 2i plus 1 what is the value of 2i 2 into 0 is 0 and 2i plus 1 is 1 so out of these two we will shoot for the minimum 1 so minimum 1 goes over here because here we have an even index let's proceed ahead next we see the value of i gets updated by one unit and it is 1 right now so we will extract uh, two elements in that are from which the decision is to be taken 2i and 2i plus 1 so 2i gets updated to 2 and 2i plus 1 gets updated to 3 since the value is odd right now we will select the maximum one out of these two so out of 5 comma 2 the maximum one is 5 so this gets updated to 5 let's proceed ahead the value of guy gets updated to 2 and since it's or even in nature uh, let's uh, we will select the minimum one out of 2i and 2i plus 1 so what is 2i 2i is 4 and 2i plus 1 is 5 so the minimum one out of these two is 4 so 4 goes over here let's proceed ahead the value of i gets updated to 3 and what are the two contenders for the selection it is 2i which is 6 plus 7 6 comma 7 
so uh, at 6,7 we have 2,2 at both these places the so maximum one out of these two is 2 so the updated array that we have is 1, 5, 4 and 2 so let's do the same thing again let's start the iteration from the 0th index and let's go up till 1 index half of the length of the original array so this time the original array gets updated to 1, 5, 4 and 2 so what are the two contenders for the current index 0, 2i and 2i plus 1 so this is 0 and this is 1 since the value is 0 right now you will select the minimum one out of these two so out of 1 and 5 which one is the minimum one 1 is the minimum one let's proceed ahead next the value gets updated to 1 and 1 being odd in nature we will be selecting the maximum out of 2i and 2i plus 1 so what is 2i it is 2 2i plus 1 is 3 out of 4 and 3 which one is the maximum one 4 is the maximum one so 4 goes over here so the array gets updated to 1 comma 4 let's again perform the same thing and the i value of i gets updated to 0 uh, what are the two contenders 2i and 2i plus 1 so 0 comma 1 becomes the two contenders and the value at 0 is 1 uh, the value at 1 is 4 the minimum one out of these two is 1 so the answer gets updated to 1 and as soon as we see that the size of the output array is 1 we abort the process I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked here and I'll simply walk through the coding section. So here I have transformed the input array into list and till the time my list size is greater than 1, I keep on processing the list. This is the helper method that I have created. Once I am done with the out of this while loop, I simply return the uh, element that ex the, the only element that exists in my list at the 0th index. So the problem lies in writing this process list method appropriately. So it accepts the input list and here I have created an i variable, it initialized it to 0. Here I have created my output list and stored in the variable named answer. So I iterate uh, over my input list till the time uh, my i is less than input size dot, uh, since input size by 2. If my i is divisible by 2 that means it's even in nature, I will be selecting the minimum one out of. 2i and 2i plus 1 otherwise I'll be selecting the maximum out of 2i and 2i plus 1 and with each iteration I'll be updating the value of i once I'm done with this I simply return the answer variable so let's try this up with this we have successfully solved all the four questions the link of the solutions are mentioned in the description below the telegram group and the discord server is also mentioned in the description below Anil Sharma the one that got nine offers and rejected Google is also mentioned in the description below Coding Decoded SD Sheet is again mentioned in the description below. So guys, please do check this out if you found this entire video helpful. And please share it with all your friends and family members. Thank you.